Guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Dirtbag Outdoors YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning on in and check it out. This is going to be fun. This is going to be a lot of fun, and I'm, I, we're going to go over it right now. We're going to get it to the range, and this is going to be kind of a project, kind of a before and after. I looked through the footage. I thought I had some footage of the, the true before. I don't. I must have accidentally deleted it or, or something. I couldn't find it, but you're going to have to take my word for it for what I'm about to say. So what is this? Well, this is a pawn shop find, believe it or not. This is a pawn shop find. This is a original Savage Axis bolt action rifle in 223. Um, I've been wanting a 223 for a long time, and I got this thing for pennies on the dollar because it was absolutely beat. It was absolutely beat, y'all. You're going to have to trust me. I took every single thing on this thing apart, cleaned, oiled, scrubbed, brushed. It was literally disgusting, like... I'm pretty sure there was mold and like all kinds of like schmegma and like fermented cheese up in everywhere. The scope, it came, it came with this like, what is this, a three to nine, a three to nine by 40 Tasco, which is just ideal, especially with like the super high rings. It's really great. This thing wasn't even mounted correctly. Uh, somehow, I don't know what they did. They had it mounted on the front mount right here. They had it up over it but like somehow still clamped to it. So the, the, whole, the whole scope is sitting like this. I, I don't understand it. It was hilariously awful, but I'm like, man, for what I can get this for, put a little TLC into it. I, I, I'm pumped. And I actually, I, I love pawn shops. You can find some really overpriced crap in there and you can find some, some dandies. You know what I mean? You can find some freaking dandies and I'd like to do more uh, kind of pawn shop challenges. If you guys are interested in that kind of thing, let me know. Um, and we'll try to get some more filming of that type of thing. So it's really fun. It's really fun to go in and search. There's not that many of them around here. Unfortunately, you kind of have to travel a little bit. But um, I picked this thing up for next to nothing. I think it was 150 or less. I think it was less than that, but it, 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 was, it definitely wasn't more than that. Um, I wasn't really willing to pay anything more than that due to the just the trashed condition that it was in. Uh, it looks pretty good now. It's not perfect. We're just going to call it the $100, the $100 pawn shop rifle, okay? I, I can't remember. I'm going to have to look at the receipts to know for sure, but we're going to call it the $100 pawn shop rifle, 223, kind of before and after. We are going to shoot it as is with the Tasco, the factory trigger, everything as it is at 20, uh, 50 yards. I don't have the 100-yard range ready yet, so we are going to get it out to 100 or, and, and beyond, but the range is not ready yet. So we're going to have to hit the 50 yard range. We're going to do before and after groups. We're going to uh, thread the barrel. After the first test, we're going to thread the barrel. We're going to shoot it suppressed. We are going to change the optic and rings to probably something just nicer that I already have. I'm not probably going to buy something specifically for it, but something that's um, nice yet budget friendly. And then we are going to put either a trigger in it or the cheap $20 kit. I think M Carbo makes one or a few other places that make them. It's literally just some springs. They're pretty easy to put in and they make a world of difference because from the factory, these triggers are very, very firm. Uh, but yeah, guys, let's go ahead and get the first test underway. I want to bring a few different types of ammunition, different 223, some steel case, some brass case, which I'll show you guys once we get to the range. Stay tuned for a part two after we shoot it today, and I'll see you in a minute. Guys, we are back from the range with the Savage Crapsis. Maybe maybe that's what we should call her, the Crapsis. The $100 pawn shop rifle. We're back from the range. It's Maiden Voyage. How did it do? Well, I learned a lot. Um, I learned a lot. I remembered how bad the factory triggers are on these. Uh, for target purposes, you know, for, you know, Hunt Coyote or something, I'm sure it's probably totally adequate. Um, and then the scope. There's something severely wrong in this in this region right here, it is so blurry. You can't, you can't focus the reticle or the target. It's both blurred. So I'm really anxious to get a different optic put on here. And of course we're going to thread the barrel trigger upgrade. Um, 
I think I, I I found a way instead of maybe spending the twenty bucks, maybe we do the a budget balling challenge on this, where you can actually kind of work on the springs yourself, a little choppy cut or something like that, to basically do the same thing. I don't know. I'm going to look into it. Worst case scenario, it's twenty bucks to get the new spring kit, so no big deal, no harm, no foul. Let's just jump right into the targets. Okay, so this was fifty yards. It's a beautiful day, like seventy-two degrees, like light wind. Uh, just remember, I couldn't see. It was like if you were drunk with like scratched up safety glasses on. That's pretty much that was pretty much my view. Okay, I just did three shot groups. There we are, right there for part one of this little series. PMC, no. Wolf. I started out with wolf. So the wolf stuff, the 55 grain steel case, a 1.32 inch group. Two were pretty close. One flyer, probably me for not being able to see. Who knows? PMC stuff did, uh, that's a 55 grain brass, 0.74. Not bad. Not too bad considering all, th all things considered here. The Tragedy Tech. This stuff here that I've heard nothing but bad things about. A local company that I don't think's in existence anymore but I still have a few random boxes of it. Uh, same as the PMC, actually, identical, 0.74. And then we tried out this stuff here, the Unlimited Ammo. This is their 62 grain. And I think I had a flyer or me because two of them were in the same hole, but I had a flyer out to the left, 1.79 inch with the flyer. If I could have had three touch and we would have been, you know, 0.15 inches or so. So uh, I'm, I'm thinking that was a flyer from me. Not necessarily the ammo, but who's to say? We're going to test more. We're going to do the upgrades and, and give it another try. If you guys have any other cheap upgrades, suggestions for this, let me know. I'm, like I said, I'm going to throw on a different scope and rings, budget ball and status. We're going to go barrel threaded, shoot it suppressed. And we are going to do something with the trigger springs. I'm not going to do a tr an entire trigger. We're going 20 bucks or less for a trigger upgrade. Hopefully free. Hopefully I can figure out um, how these guys are doing it, watch some YouTube videos or something. But yeah, so you guys let me know what you think about that with the, the results. I'm confident in saying that 90% of the accuracy was this scope being so freaking blurry. And every time you tried to adjust it, the whole reticle went like, <laughs> like that. So there, there's something, there's like a catastrophic failure of some sort in here. It would probably be okay for like a 22 or something. Um, who knows? I don't know. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two. I'm going to get these upgrades underway and hopefully I can get the barrel threaded ASAP. I know everyone's busy right now with all the form four approvals going through, but um, stay tuned. Check out the links down below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I love you all. We'll see you next time.